Number 34. In World War II, there were several reported cases of airmen who jumped from their flaming airplanes with no parachute to escape certain death. Some fell about 2,000 feet or 6,000 meters, or 20,000 feet, excuse me, or 6,000 meters, and some of them survived with few life threatening injuries. For these lucky pilots, the tree branches and snowdrifts on the ground allowed their deceleration to be relatively small. If we assume that a pilot's speed upon impact was 103 miles per hour, or 54 meters per second, then what was his deceleration? Assume that the trees and the snow stopped him over a distance of 3 meters. Okay, so just draw a picture. We have an unfortunate situation of someone falling out of an airplane, right? So they're traveling down. And it says that um, the distance that they uh, would have fallen, let me just see. If we assume the pilot speed upon impact, yes, okay. So let's take this as the point of impact, actually. So once they impacted the snow, and let's say all, you know, everything beneath here, right, is snow, okay? At the point of impact here, they were traveling with a speed, I'll call this the initial speed, of 54 meters per second. Okay. Now, I really should make this negative because it's in the downward direction. Um, I don't have to really for this problem. It's all going to work out, but I'm going to do it anyway, okay? Just so we can see that it's, it's proper to do so and we should get the right values. Okay. So now, um, okay. So now if he's falling, great. So we got that. All right. So assume the trees and snow stopped him over distances of three meters. So that means that the, from here, Right, all the way down, the displacement value is going to be three uh, meters. Okay, wonderful. And um, that's really all that they give us, right? We also know that they, he came to a stop right at the bottom here. So we know that the final velocity should have been zero meters per second. Also, in thinking about using proper signs, I have to make the three meters negative, right? Because the starting point is... Uh, at the top and then it's traveling downward okay so I should have everything I need and now it says uh, what was his deceleration so we are looking for a right because we're looking for acceleration all right so now is there a formula that relates these three um, variables to one another the initial velocity the displacement the final velocity and acceleration and there is right if we notice it's the fourth one so let's write that down so the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity here is 0. Right? The initial velocity is negative 54 squared plus then 2 times the acceleration, which is what we're looking for, and then the displacement was negative 3 meters. I left out the units because I know I'm consistent. I got seconds and meters. Okay, so I know my acceleration will come out to be meters per second squared. So, type into the calculator, negative 54 squared. Okay, so we got negative now. And what was it? Yeah, so I got to use two sig figs. So negative 2900. Okay, plus then two times negative three. And this should have been two significant figures because we're really 3.0. So just add that over there a little bit. So now it should be plus a negative 6.0 A. Okay, so now uh, let's add this on over to the other side, right? So we got 6.0a, and now 6.0a, and that cancels. So we got 6.0a is equal to, and here's the thing. I don't know why I put a negative here, because when you square it, right, it becomes positive. So that was just a silly oversight on my part. So let me just erase that. Apologies. And um, now let's come back down to, so 2,900 here. And let's divide out now the 6.0. 6.0. So I should have two significant figures. So my acceleration here, 2,900 divided by 6. So it comes out to about 480. Okay, 480 meters per second squared. Okay, great. So that is the acceleration. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. Why isn't that... Um, why isn't that negative? I thought it's decelerating. So why is it not negative? Well, it is decelerating, but the thing is the acceleration actually of the object is pointing upwards, right? Since the object 
um, since unfortunately the, the individual is tra he's traveling downwards. So in order to slow in order to slow the travel downwards, there has to be an opposing force pointing upwards. Okay? So, and that opposing force is essentially related to the acceleration. So notice that the actual acceleration is pointing in the positive y direction, and therefore the acceleration should be positive. See, so technically speaking, the answer here has to be a positive value. Now, if you don't put in the negative values, like the initial velocity and the displacement, like I did in the beginning here and here, your answer will come out to be negative. Now, technically that's wrong because of the way the uh, object is traveling. He's moving down, okay? So um, I don't know how particular your professor or your teacher is going to be. They might accept both and it might not be a big deal, but it really should be positive in this case if we consider uh, the actual physics of it and how the object is moving in the negative uh, y direction. All right, so guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.